One part of this section is decomposing one fraction into partial fractions, meaning a fraction of multiple parts. Now, this uh, method, this, t this takes quite a while to do, and it is a, a fairly lengthy involved method, and we'll see how that works in just a moment. But the very, very first step is a fairly simple step. All you need to do is factor the bottom. And it's only the bottom that you need to worry to, uh, to factor. Factor the denominator. So if I look here, x squared minus 4x minus 21, well, that's a simple quadratic. So I need to know what multiplies to negative 21 and what uh, adds to negative 4. And those numbers are negative 7 and positive 3. So this factors to x. Um, let me put the full fraction here negative 3x minus 29 over x minus 7 times x plus 3. And then now this is going to equal, my whole goal is to make two fractions, and on the bottom one of one of those fractions, I'm going to have x minus 7, one of my factors, and on the other one I'm going to have x plus 3, my other factor. Now, I have no idea what's going to go on the top. There's no way to guess at what's going to be on the top to make this work. So I'm just simply going to write A and B. Uh, and A and B are just going to be numbers, or, and we're going to find out what they're, what they're going to be. So now i got to solve this equation. Now I have an equation here, and we're going to solve it like we had been doing. So we're going to multiply everything by the denominators. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 7. So if I multiply this by x minus 7, then I would cancel this x minus 7. If I multiply this by x minus 7, well then I cancel the x minus 7. Again, remember it's multiplying by x minus 7 over 1. So the top will cancel with the bottom. The top will cancel with the bottom. Here, there is nothing on the bottom to cancel, so my x minus 7 is still going to be multiplied to my top times b. We'll see that, we'll simplify that in a minute. Uh, now I'm going to, I still have x plus 3, I'm going to multiply everything by x plus 3. x plus 3 over 1, so this would cancel again. We've seen this before. Uh, also, if I multiply this last one by x plus 3, that cancels, so that fraction's gone, but it will not cancel here. So again, it's x plus 3 on the top, that's what we're multiplying by, so it's an x plus 3 there. So now as I write this down, I get negative, negative 3x minus 29 is all that's left on this side, equals, I'm going to distribute here, ax plus 3a. ax plus 3a plus bx minus 7b. All right, and now we're going to use this to solve. So before we go back there, I need to sort of rearrange some of the uh, order of things. I'm going to write negative 3x minus 29 this is going to be the same. You notice the x's are first and the numbers are in second. So we're going to put things with x's first. ax plus bx plus 3a. I'm going to put the numbers, the things that just have numbers, no x's. Second, 3a minus, 7, uh, minus 7b. Now I want you to take a look right here. a and b are just numbers. Again, they're just numbers. So ax plus bx, in order for this statement to be true, has to equal negative 3x. In other words, a plus b has to equal negative 3. a plus b has to equal negative 3 in order for this to work. Well, that just leaves these other ones are just the numbers. Plus 3a minus 7b have to make negative 29. Uh, and so I'm going to just write that. 3a minus 7b have to equal negative 29. And right now I have a system of two equations. 
and I have two variables, two equations I can solve. I'm going to solve using elimination. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 7 because I have a minus 7 here, so if I have a plus 7 there, it'll cancel. So this would be 7a, 7b, and that would be negative 21. If I total those up, that adds to negative 50, and I get 10a, and the b's will cancel. They're gone. So 10a equals negative 50, a must equal negative 5. And to find b, I could plug it back in. And let me plug it back into this one when it looked a lot simpler. When it was negative 3 equals a plus b. Now if a is negative 5, negative 5 plus what equals negative 3? And you can uh, do that in math, you'll get 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So a is negative 5 and b is 2. So let's go back and plug those in. Going back to where we started, we factored the bottom and then we split it into two fractions with this a and b which we solved for. a was negative 5, b was 2. Now all I needed to do is plug those numbers back in. So a is negative 5, so a is negative 5 and I'm going to go ahead and write the negative out in front. So 5 on top and the negative out in front over x minus 7. And then b is 2, so plus 2 over x plus 3. And this fraction equals those two fractions. That's basically what we just did. We took one fraction and we split it into two. And that's how you decompose partial fractions. A lengthy process because you have to factor the bottom. You have to split it into two things, right? a and b. Uh, for your two numbers, then you have to solve that equation, and then you have to isolate the x's and go uh, uh, and find out um, a plus b equals some number, and then isolate the numbers and whatever however that combination works out. It's a very, very lengthy process. And this process is more of an introduction for something that is much more important in calculus to be able to do. Mm -hmm.